So I've taken the car a little bit further. I've started building doors and adding uh, other components to it. I'm just going to go full uh, you know, expert mode here. That, by the way, is Control-Alt-X uh, to toggle back and forth through it. Uh, I've been making things as separate pieces in this case. I found as I moved on, I eventually had to attach the doors to the side to really ensure that I kept some of those hard chines that pass through the door and out into the back and then I'll re-separate them again but I'm always making sure that I keep this contour line that I've created just like I did with the hood um, around the door. I've carried it up and around the top of the uh, wing doors um, so I understand sort of how they fit together. I've dropped in windscreens kind of at the closest approximation where I think they are currently based on the drawings as well I've added in you know uh, you know simple lights at this point they're kind of mostly shaped I'm going to have to build around them and make sure that they fit together but again this is that idea that you don't want to race ahead and finish something because it's really hard to tell exactly which direction the contours go in and how they shape and form you add way too many vertices in any one of the models right now you're suddenly going to realize that it's very hard to get rid of that little wobble in the surface and cars can't have those. That's what looks like it's been in an accident. Cars need to be perfect. And if we're creating digital cars, they should be more than perfect. If you notice these days when you watch car commercials, you look at the cars and they are pristine. Guess what? They're all digital. That's, you know, for that reason. Now, something else I did here is I started building the, uh, the front. So if we take a look at this absolutely gorgeous vehicle, you can see that the front of the car is all one molding. So effectively, there's a seam here and there is a seam around to the side, uh, you know, to the wheel well uh, on the side. And this entire piece is one single molding on the front of the car. But I decided to start with a separate piece and get this flat line around here accurate first. I could have done it inside of that same piece and just added, you know, and started a new edge loop in it. It was just very easy for me to add uh, add a new object and attach them together later so that I start getting that contour line uh, going. When we look at the, uh, the the front, you can see I've got the part of this part of the front kind of already going. And uh, I'll just go and turn off my open sub div. And you can see that I've ensured that it's, it's going to come together. So this will get attached on very shortly. But I just found it was easy to break it down that way um, and, and add it in yeah, in that way. So now, um, uh, you know, I can pull this inside faces in. Again, if we look at that car, you can see this inside face gets pulled in. Well, that's really easy on this shape. Um, I'm going to skip down. I've added some hotkeys, which are nice. I wish they were default. Uh, shift 1 and one, two, three, I think, are available. More might be. And I've got those set to Shift 1 down the modifier stack, Shift 2 up the modifier stack, um, so I can navigate. Um, and then, of course, the hotkeys one so I can navigate up and down without having to reach which is really nice. I'm going to go to three on the keyboard so I can grab the uh, border um, and select the outside border. Now that is going to grab everything roll the way around for us because you know we've got a symmetry modifier on this. So back to two and I'm going to double click um, on the outside one um, with holding down alt to get rid of that or you could have just come in here and double clicked on the inside so there are many ways of selecting things so with that done um, in in view mode again alt right click and you can get to your different working modes without having to reach up here and wait for a menu to open uh, i'm going to hold down uh, shift and just drag that in and that's going to create our, uh, you know, illusion of that piece moving in. Just, uh, again, the alt tilt to uh, uh, show end result. And I believe it kind of tapers in a bit. And here's another trick. I want to be able to scale this side in. But if I do that right now, I'm also scaling the middle in because the pivot's over here. Pivot of my object's in the middle. So I'm going to go to um, Parent and skip over to Parent. You can see it's still in the wrong place. But if I choose where it is displayed, I can get it to display right at the center, which is way back here on the ground. So I can easily now... Um, pull that in sideways if I want. 
um, you know, so scaling it around that center point. The parent is the object itself in this case. Now that we have that, let's talk about uh, sort of making some of these edges a little sharper. I have the hood beginning to be built here. I'm just going to use my hotkeys to get down to the bottom of the stack. And you'll see with the open sub div, it's really softening this hard chine that's on the hood. And if we look at that, it's quite a crisp line coming all the way down into the uh, uh, this, you know, sort of the front piece of the car right the the very front of it so we can we don't have to add double edge loops in here we can do that by selecting the edge loops uh, down either side here so again you can see that I've selected those showing result off under edges I'm going to take crease and I can crease those up and I can make those that perfect hard uh, chine now without adding any extra edge loops whatsoever to the model so that can be uh, really advantageous so it's easy to correct things keep things as simple as possible as long as you can so use that feature set wherever you can even on the top edge of the car here where we might want to um, make the top of this this line crisp so we've got this this edge line here and if we want to make that crisper you know and, and tighten it up and it looks like i already have actually i've already got it up to a point too so you can tighten that up a little uh, a little bit and you can get that cleaner line and this nice sharp line down where the car is supposed to be again cars have got this crisp feeling to them okay let's look at the logo and build this logo um, and get this front grill in so you know, this is kind of getting down to specialty modeling, but the purpose of this is is to understanding that there's other methods and that there's ways of use, utilizing your tool sets to your advantage. Everybody sees this as a poly model. I'm going to start and I'm just going to start poly modeling this. I'm not going to poly, poly model anything in the middle here. These bars, I probably will start with a box, but you'll see where I go with this. I'm going to just control right click, give myself a circle because, well, frankly, it's a circle. Um, so I'm going to make sure that is on center. So I have to make sure we're viewing. There we go. And I'm going to put that where it's going to be. You can see the drawings a little bit off left viewport. I'm going to pull it all the way out. And in this case right now, I'm not going to angle it. You can see that it's actually on an angle. I'm just going to leave it straight for my own sanity. Um, X and I'm going to add a sweep modifier. So with a sweep modifier, you can go ahead. Uh, default, I think, is angle. Um, you know, bar will get you there uh, partially, you know, so you can actually control this bar shape or whatever. But when we look at the way this is shaped, you can see that it is you know, slightly curved and tapered on the outside. It's straight on the inside into the back. OK, and then it has the uh, uh, the star, sort of three-point star in the middle of it, uh, and we're going to model these in separate pieces because, you know, they probably did too. So this isn't going to work for us. So I'm just going to pop over to the left viewport here, and I'm going to create a rectangle, okay? And that rectangle is going to represent the form of this around the circle. So back to our sweep modifier, change it to use custom shape, and I'm going to say pick. Um, now, it looks like it because I already did this once. The uh, angle was already set to 90, but it came in this way. And you have two choices. One, think of this standing on edge, which to me is going to be more confusing. You could rotate this. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees. We'll find out which. Now, into our shape, watch what happens. Though. See how it's in bold? It's actually being instanced into the sweep modifier. Watch what happens when we convert it down to an edible spline now. The bolding goes away and you're going to find that the shape no longer has any effect whatsoever on the shape of the sweep modifier. It's lost the connection because we collapsed it to an edible poly. So I'm going to have to pick it again in this case. So now if uh, you know, I should be able to go in and you're going to be able to see it, um, you know, react. So this is the inner shape. This is the outer shape here. One of the things I'm going to do is set them all to corner. I like working on corners to begin with. I don't need the back, so I don't need that back line back there. Um, I'm going to take this uh, knot and move it up. So that tapers the outside right away and brings it uh, in. 
And then we can just go about uh, adding some uh, Bezier handles on these. I'm going to go with a Bezier corner and you know, uh, click on the XYZs where you want it. Or again, you can use the F8 to cycle. Um, and I'm going to pull that down to get myself that curve that curves around the outside. And I'm going to have to zoom in to make sure I grab the handle here. And I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to try and get that curve on the outside as well. And so that's starting to look really good. If I turn off um, uh, um, the uh, wireframe, you can see we've got an edge here. And that's because smoothing groups are being set based on the break in the handles. Because this is currently set to um, uh, Bezier corner, it's putting a corner there. Now, one of two ways. We could just smooth this with a smooth modifier because it's close enough. Or we could right click on this and say Bezier and you can see it goes and smooths it now. Now, I made sure these were in pretty much a straight line. Um, so, you know, I didn't get any major sh uh, uh, shape changes. So I can set those and then just tweak that back up, for instance. Now, to control the geometry in this is two ways. One, if I want to control the geometry around it this way, so the lines coming, uh, you know, that radiate around it, it's in the... Um, uh, in the in the, the shape spline we're using to shape it. So whether you want it high res or low res or however you want this to look, optimize. If you turn it off, we'll get uh, we'll get them down inside here. We really don't need them. We just need around the outside. Now to get them the ones that are radiating this way around it, those are handled down in the circle, showing result again, and we can control those right here and determine how many they need to be in the uh, interpolation to get the resolution that we're looking for. So that's a perfect shape. Now, something else to note, sweep, generate mapping coordinates and turn it on. It's on now unwrapped. So whenever you're um, you know, procedurally creating geometry in 3ds Max, you want to make sure that you generate mapping coordinates and turn that on. Now the uh, this center three point star is real easy. Create shapes star, okay? And I think by default, I should re default some of these back in. It comes in looking like this. I'm going to align that because it's all the way at the back. So that's Alt A to use the align tool up here. I'm going to align it just center to center and drop that in place. So it's it's up inside of it. Now we can then set it down to be three points and look at the front. Um, we can rotate this by hand. The pivot won't be aligned anymore to the other shape in orientation. And I find that can get confusing, but it's up to you. You could just rotate the shape. It's no problem. I like using things like the X form modifier in this case above it. One on the keyboard for the sub object gizmo. And I'm going to turn on the angle snap with A. And by default, it should give us the right amount of, uh, you know, angle steps that we can rotate it perf perfectly into place. Turn off my angle snap so I don't get, uh, use it again uh, later by mistake. And one to turn off my sub object again. Then all I need to do is add an extrude modifier. Now I've added over here in my list. So we've got an extrude. And we can... Um, uh, you know, throw an extrude on it and get whatever height we want. Then we want a taper modifier and we'll taper it down to negative one. And how about that? We have the logo completed. So we can now just place this where we need it. Um, I think it's pretty close to the front. And I think when you look at the front, it sticks out uh, a fair bit. But there's the logo done. I'm going to select both of those and just go ahead and make those gray for now. Now, the uh, this piece sticking out the side, I'm going to do that with a box. And I'm actually going to poly model it. So I'm going to make that the right size in the front viewport. Guess on that. Move it. move that back out to where it's supposed to be, which is going to be out here somewhere. And we're going to see that that has to get uh, pushed backwards. Now, um, I need that pivot in the right spot. I want to be able to uh, symmetry it over without guessing. So uh, insert on the keyboard, 
and I'm going to zero out in uh, X, the uh, the pivot, and then I'm going to reset it so it's uh, it's reset and it knows where it's supposed to be. So reset, reset, uh, and it puts this reset X form on here. Right click, convert to edible poly, okay? The idea of stacking edit poly modifiers on top of boxes makes zero sense. It really does. I see a lot of even pros doing it. It doesn't make sense to do it. You can blow your model up really fast. So my suggestion is, is never do it. We don't need that end face and we don't need the back face. I'm gonna get rid of those, so I'm not dealing with them. So now that I've centered this pivot, and I'll hit, sorry, insert to make sure I turn that off, I can use the same open sub div and everything on this object because it will allow me to do so. With that in place, I can now start shaping it a bit. So I'm gonna to go to four and grab this end one. There's a bit of a taper to this, so I can taper it down. There's a taper in the front, you know, it tapers down a fair bit and this uh, edge kind of gets pushed back. And if you notice, I'm not, don't have it in place yet. And it's because it's kind of easier sometimes to shape certain things uh, while they're in, uh, while they're sort of lined up to the world. So that all looks pretty good so far. That's, um, I'm just going to grab these and maybe move them forward. No, I'm just going to grab the vertices and move them forward. I think the, uh, the front one, looks pretty good so I'm going to get it to contact with that and now I can pull it back and looking in the front viewport uh, I can determine where that's going to sit and how that's going to be in there uh, looking at the reference um, so let's also uh, show end result on this you'll see that it's very soft at this point and so that might just take a couple edge loops there's this uh, sort of interesting angle that gets placed on the front here and I'm going to take that and just kind of angle that back a bit and so we've got our taper happening on it that's pretty much done but it's crisper on the front edge if we look at it you can see it's got a little bit crisper kind of lines so once again it's probably easiest just to go in and grab these front edges and then just crease them up and make it look a little sharper. And the end one even looked even more creased. And I'd have to look at it closer, but I think that's even more creased, uh, sort of it gets to the end. And there you go, that front piece is done. I'll set the color as well, the silver. So now what we need is the a cap behind here. So when you look at the, uh, look at this, there's a black piece in the back. So we could get a cylinder and try and jam it in there, but here's another neat trick. So I'm going to steal a, a, a shape out of here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to add an edit poly modifier temporarily, three in the keyboard for border and pick that inner border. I'm then going to say cap. So now I've capped it off, but you can see it's in the wrong place. Okay. I'm then going to go four on the keyboard, select that new polygon, and I'm going to go ahead and detach that. So I'm going to use detach and detach it as a separate object. Now I don't need my edit poly modifier anymore. I'll just delete it. And of course, it just leaves the original shape exactly as it was. Now I have this piece here. And I can make sure that I move that forward to where it's supposed to be. And it's like this black piece in here, you know, so I'm just going to now just give it a darker color. And there's my logo all done. The only thing we need to do now is just make sure that this, uh, these pieces here are angled correctly into place with the, uh, with the vehicle. I'm just going to go to view to move it backwards. And that's probably pretty darn good right there. So there's a couple of techniques and ideas on how to model uh, pieces. Uh, you know, stop just polymodeling everything blindly. There are better ways.